Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. If you're not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. As you'll know from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it yet, the description. Today I am covering a release from a UK indie brand called Glisten Cosmetics, and it is their 1991 palette. I was around in 1991. In fact, I've been working for a year by the time 1991 came around. But let's just pretend that I didn't just say that. So, if you want to find out exactly what the inside of this little six pan palette looks like, how well or otherwise it behaved, and what I'm going to blether on about this time, then my friends, you have the best seat in the house. As I've said for some considerable time and here echoed elsewhere on less imaginative channels. As Sammy the Sloth recommends you grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, I would have shown you this in the intro, this little mini palette from Glisten Cosmetics. 1991. I will put swatches up here. Um, neons don't swatch well. They never do. Um, but this is what the palette looks like. Awesome. Uh, so I'm going to start lobbing some of this onto my face, but first, this is still a teaching channel, uh, it's also blisteringly hot in my kitchen, hence the fan being on. You may have to forgive upper lip sweat, because I get the feeling it's going to be a thing today. Um, part of this being a teaching channel, I go at a speed that beginners can keep up. Um, that's also partly because of my chronic pain. So if I'm going too slowly for you, just use the speed widget and speed me up. I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids. The way that eyeshadow wears on the lids through the day is very similar, but the method of application and the workarounds that you need to get your eyeshadow on in the first place looking good are very different. Um, if you've not been to any of my tutorials before, when I say I zoom in, I zoom in. It's literally just my eyes on screen. So even if you watch me on your phone, you're going to be able to see what's going on. Okay, I'm going to start with a very tiny blending brush because loose neon powders normally blend fine. Pressed neon powders for some reason don't always blend well. So I've gone for a tiny brush so that if necessary I can just pack them on and build them up with tapping rather than doing the Viennese waltz blend which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when you get there, and reverse turns to come back again. So, I'll insert the clip right now about eye shapes, and I'll see you at the other end to pop some of those colours on my lids. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton 
I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush something like this or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which 9 times out of 10 will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, okay I am back as I said using a very small tapered brush. Whatever the size of the head of the brush that's how far it will blend the shadow out. To give you an indication this is the size blending brush I normally start with. So you can see I've gone a lot level. I've gone a lot lot smaller to start with. Okay, so I'm going to start with Sonic, which is the blue.
I'm just going to tap that back off because I don't know how much fallout we're going to get. And I'm going to start just above my natural crease and let's see if we can do the Viennese walls with these. Now the reason that I prefer the Viennese walls blend is because I'm 46 years old. I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves basically. But I know slim girls in their teens and 20s who have mobile lids um, just because of genetics. So there's a reasonable amount of fallout from this, but not too bad. And the colour is going on quite nicely. So that's good to see. I'm not going to take it all the way over. And I'm just going to bring this colour down onto the outer third of the mobile lid and just bring that up to meet the blended section. I can't see a damn thing right now being blind in the other right. Hoping I'm still on screen. Oh yeah, look at that, perfect. If you do suddenly get a patch, like I've just got there, where it's just worn away, once you're happy with your blend at the edge, pick up a little bit more uh, pigment on your brush and do the tap to build. So you're basically just tapping it on and moving the brush around to build the colour back up. I do struggle here and here with super dry patches um, and they can very often give me trouble when it comes to applying eyeshadow to that particular area. Now I always do the eyes at the same time as in you know finish using one colour on both eyes before moving on to the next one. And there's a reason for that. Your eyes are not symmetrical. Unless you photoshop them like a certain Jimmy Chuck does. Like your brows and your boobs and your balls. Depending on which gender you happen to fall into. Or which gendered parts you tend to have. They're not identical. So by relaxing your brows and sitting back you can make sure you've got the same shape both sides because sometimes with my fibro if this eye is more swollen than usual I have to build the middle bit up here a bit more. Um, this eye sometimes when I apply the, the pigment instead of coming on straight like that it comes on looking curved because of the way that the eye is um, swollen or not on that particular day. But if I'd already put all the other colours on, I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell. Uh, and that's part of the trick of getting your shadow to look as good as possible when you first apply it is to make sure it looks as symmetrical as possible and sometimes that means doing different shapes on each eye so that when you're talking to people and you've got your brows relaxed unless you walk around permanently botoxed they look the same that's half the battle again bring that onto the outer edge of that eye right I'm going to clean the brush off using a clean washcloth. I don't like using colour switches, they're far too harsh on the bristles of the brush. 
Um, you can use a washcloth, you can use a microfiber cloth, an old tea towel you've got hanging around. Even a bit of kitchen roll would be better than using a colour switch. To be honest, the leg of your pyjamas would be better than using a colour switch. Right, I'm going to go into Malibu, which is the hot pink, which is no doubt going to stain like a mofo. But that's not a problem because I could just cover it up. Now, when you are blending two colours together, unless you're going for an editorial look where you want a harsh line between them, the first blend that you do needs to be half on the colour you've already laid down and half on your lid. Like that. Because what that does, if you can see, that's giving me a really nice purple where the two have blended together, colour theory. But it also means you've now got a gradient rather than a solid line where one colour stops and the next one stops. And that, my loves, is half the battle is getting that nice gradient so it sort of flows into the next colour. Obviously if I was doing a more editorial look then I wouldn't have done that. I would have started just on the lid that had no, sh no shading on it yet. Same thing this side. And you can see again we get an instant beautiful gradient blend. Which is exactly what we want. Well, take your time of blending. You know, if I am still going a little bit too fast for you, you can use the speed budget to slow me down a bit. I'm probably either going to sound like a chipmunk or a sloth, depending on whether you speed me up or speed me down. But um, feel free to utilise that option if you need to. I think I might build the intensity up on this side just a fraction more. So that's the benefit of sitting back and looking at them before you blend the next shade in to assess just how deep the colour is each side. I love using indie brands, um, partly because they tend to have way more interesting colour stories than the big brands do, um, but also because they have a, a smaller production run usually, um, and that usually means their quality control is, is, is tighter, is better, you know? But I'm going to go into Turtles, which is clearly the green. Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, heroes in a half shell. I am so showing my age. Although by 1991 I've been working for a year. Okay. Same way we did the blend half on this bit, we're also going to do the blend half on that bit. So I'm going to start right where the two colours meet and gently blend out across the bottom and back again and then up the side and back again. Am I bothered that I've just hit my brow? No, not really. I'll just put the uh, 
brow highlight on top of it. It's really not an issue. Blending that gorgeous green on. This is what I was saying about how the green didn't actually swatch very well, but you can see when I'm using it, it is actually very vibrant. At least I hope that's coming across on camera. Um, it's later, way later than I normally film. Um, because I was just in too much pain, to be quite frank. It's taken much, much longer. I had to have a as well as my usual morphine tablets that I take, along with every other kind of painkiller that I've got this morning, um, I ended up having to have a dose of my Aura Morph because it just wasn't touching it this morning, which possibly means we're due for a change in weather. Perhaps we've got some rain coming or something. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's currently 13.13, so coming up to quarter past one for those of you who are not 24 hour clock nuts like me and Kayla. Um, and normally I'm filming, just, I normally start filming just before seven in the morning. Um, but it's it's taken this long for my pain to kick in and it's it keeps coming over cloudy outside and then brightening up and then cloudy and brightening up so I'm not entirely sure whether these colours are showing effectively but I have got my LED lights on behind the camera you can see them reflected in my pupils again cleaning the brush off I have bought other things from Glisten Cosmetics. I'm trying to remember if I bought a palette from them or if it was just the liners that I bought. It might just have been the liners. I got that green, um, like confetti almost. And I've got the yellow and the lilac liners, water liners that I bought from them. But I think this is the first. I think this is the first palette I've had from them. I think. But so far, I'm quite impressed by it, especially with it being neons. Now here's the teller. We're going into Bart. Eat my shorts. And again. Just gonna blend that colour right the way down. Bit more fallout with this colour. It's taking a bit more to build it up. Than the others, but it is building. I think the tip with this is absolutely to use a smaller, denser brush like this rather than a normal, fluffy blending brush. I think that's going to be the trick with these particular shades to get the best out of them because pressed neon pigments are very difficult to create well uh, which is why most neon that you buy is loose pigment now I do struggle this side with the deep creasing that I have here um, and when it's time to apply Front door hold. Sorry about that. I am back. I ordered something from Depop. Hasn't arrived. And uh, just seen that I've got. That wasn't it. That was 
delivery for the husband. Um, but I've now got a card through saying that the sender didn't pay enough postage, so I've got to pay the additional postage plus a one pound handling fee. Excellent. Just what I need. Mind you, if you're going to be sending something which is C5 but that thick, there's no good just putting a stamp on it, which is what she did. And apparently, the woman at the post office told her it'd be okay. I doubt that very much. I very much doubt that. Because the way that the postage works here, for people that don't know, um, for letters and small packages we get charged per size and per thickness and the minute something goes over five mils thick it becomes a parcel <sighs> just what I needed today perfect right I've got my little bit of cucumber fixing spray left. Um, I always wet shimmers before putting them on partly to prevent fallout, partly to increase um, you know, the, the, the shimmeriness, the reflection but as always with a pressed pigment never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush always wet it afterwards. So we're going to spirit which is this sort of silvery white shade this is very crumbly be super careful if you're using this right. now the ferrule is now wet so tuck it in your knuckles and spin because the last thing you want is moisture getting down there and loosening the bristles because then you won't have a brush, or you'll have a stick. So this is just a really, really small, I think it's a lip brush, I think. I'm not sure, but it's a small, flat brush. And it's great for getting right into that inner corner, especially when you have either deep set or hooded lids. So I'm just going to bring that and up across the lid like so dry the brush off add a wee bit more pigment dry the ferrule And just continue that to just over the halfway point. Yes, I just poked myself in the eye. And if I do that in the eye that I can see with, can you imagine how many times I've poked this one? Now throughout the day this will transfer up but I'm really not fussed about that because I'm not having to go anywhere today so yes so dry the brush off adding more pigment adding the pigment now this side as I said, I have to do it slightly differently because otherwise this pigment builds up in those creases there rather than being packed on it, it sort of packs in there loosely rather than being properly blended and then throughout the day it's got flakes up into my eye and down my cheeks, it's very very painful so the way that I do this, so that I do as little damage as possible to the lid 
the width of the creasing plus the same width again then put my finger on and gently stretch the lid out but only stretch it out as far as it takes to straighten the creasing so that I can properly blend this pigment onto the lid. Once that's done I'm going to gently let go, dry the brush off, add a wee bit more pigment and then continue along the rest of the lid the same way that I did this side so without pulling the lid. Do not do that to your lid unless you already have the same issue as me. Otherwise you will have the same issue as me and I promise you it only ever gets worse. Right, now I'm going to I've dried the brush off and I'm going into teen. Okay, this is a different... The first one was very crumbly, as I hope you can see. This one is more the kind that gets hard pan on it. But then you can still go over the area that's got hard pan and pick pigment up. So this obviously has a higher oil content to the actual formulation of the pigment itself. And I'm going to apply this to the remaining part of the mobile lid that so far had not been blessed with colour. And then gently drag the silver onto the lilac and the lilac onto the silver just to buff where they meet and then clean the brush off quickly on the and, and just very lightly buff where the outer edge meets the blue. Dry the brush off, go back into teen and repeat for to the eye. I'm half Welsh, half Yorkshire so you're never quite sure what accent you're going to get from me really. Although apparently when I get angry or sassy I get very Welsh. Apparently when I've had a drink or two I get very Welsh as well. As in the accent comes out and I say stuff that's very, you know, there's jackets that caught over there and stuff. Right, so drag the silver onto the lilac. My lilac onto the silver, clean the brush off and very gently buff where it meets the blue. Hmm. That's looking super pretty. Okay my loves, I'm going to pause you while I go and uh, pop some foundation on and really start melting um, and then I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now I've got to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you but for you my lovelies it will be absolutely blooming instant. So I'll see you right now. Alright my lovelies I am back as you can see I've got pink brows. Now I used to use the Revolution pomades for this but then it seems they've stopped doing their coloured pomades, which is frustrating. So people were like, I really want to do the colourful brows that you've got, but we can't find the pomades. So, so I'm just getting the loose soap out of the spoolie at the other end. I have been using 
this. This is another indie company from Britain. Pink Honey. And this is their Honey Glue in Strawberry Sherbet. As you can see, I've only got the small pot. Basically, it has a hole through the middle of it, as you can see from the bottom there. And you just you stick your spoolie in. They recommend that you wet your spoolie. I don't do that, I've got to be honest. Um, I prefer to use the soap dry. The reason I do that is because then the brows are a little bit sticky when you first do them. Which means then when you put the coloured powder on, as in your eyeshadow using the other end of the brush, the pigment has something to stick to. It also, being a powder, sets the brows into place. So it kind of sets the brow shape. And then using your clean washcloth that you've been changing your colours on, you can just clean all the rest of the soap out of your spoolie. Nice and simple. Right, let's get back to finishing this. I look off. Right, I'm going to use a flat topped brush. My brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, which is flat topped but chunky. You can use any smudger brush, I just really like this one. And I'm going to be using a lip brush. I am going to start off with the flat brush in Sonic, which is the blue. And I'm just going to carefully run that along the lower lash line, bringing it round to meet the yellow that I'd already curled around. the same this side. Now I struggle keeping anything in my waterline. I've always had watery eyes. Add to that one of my fibro symptoms is watery eyes. Add to that hay fever. It's usually a bit of a mess. But I did try the other day this BH Power Pencil. Um, and it actually, touch wood, didn't make my eyes run. So I might have a go, Joe, at popping some of that on again today. Right, going into my chunky brush, I'm going to go into Turtles, which is the green. And I'm just going to use that to buff along the lower lash line. Gently buff that blue out a little bit. Soften it up. I know this is listed as 1991 palette, but to me this screams 1984. It really does. All I need is a track suit, you know, a shell suit, and uh, some Doc Martens with crash bottle tops on them, and some ripped jeans, and it's. Well, that was more 87, 88, I suppose. Right, I'm going to go in with my Kaleidos Moon Cruiser highlighter. This is the one with the white base but shifts from blue through to, I'm going to see it, pink. I'm not sure it's going to show. So using the lip brush, a bit of that up under the tail of my brow. That's why I wasn't fussed about the green going right up there because 
if you've got smaller eyes and you have less area for adding colour, you have to put your highlight over the top. I'm just going to go over the yellow with some of this. Then bring it under there and just blend it in under my eye. The reason I carried the yellow round is because I kind of wanted the red to go a little bit orange, the, the pink in it to go a little bit orange, like a peachy shade. And I wanted the blue to have a hint of green as well. Okay, I like that. Right, my darlings, I am going to pause you for one last time. Uh, I'm going to mascara, lipstick, highlight the rest of my face, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my finished look and initial impressions on this palette. So, I'll see you right after this wiggly bit. I am back my lovelies. Okay, I risked putting the white liner in and so far, touch wood, so good. That works, I might actually get some more colours. Um, I used my Essence Lash Paradise, the orange one, mascara. Now I can't get it back in the holder, isn't that just my story? Uh, the lippy is Wet n Wild Mega Last Liquid Cat Suit in Coral Corruption. I'm on the hunt for Jeffrey dupes. Um, this is not quite the shade I was looking for, because I was looking for a dupe for Nathan, but I think this is actually a dupe for the coral one that he released a couple of Christmas, uh, a couple of summers ago, so I'll have to swatch it against that and find out. But what we are talking about today is this little beauty. Now, obviously, I have used all the shades, which wasn't difficult. There's no mirror, by the way. Um, I'm actually really, so far, really impressed with this. Obviously, I don't know how well it's going to last, how quickly it's going to fade. Um, I'll have to wait and see with that one how it goes through the evening. But for a pressed neon pigment, uh, pressed neon palette, this has really impressed me. Um, the colours, the only one that was a little bit difficult to build up was the yellow but that built up without major hassles, it just took a little bit longer than the other three did um, I'm actually really liking how this look has turned out and uh, I can't wait to play with some more of their palettes in the future Right, my lovelies, um, if you are a 4F baby, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people at a rate of knots, um, but they're leaving the films in your news feed, so it's not obvious that you've been deleted. Sneaky. Um, once you've checked that, a thumbs up, a bit of a comment, maybe even a share. Not the turn back turn kind of share, but a share it with the world. Um, in the hope that we can break that YouTube algorithm and maybe, just maybe, introduce a few more people to the madness that is the 4F family. Uh, that being said, if you're new to the 4F family, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it here. If you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something you must have enjoyed. Uh, even if it was just my blethering at you in what I'm told is a very soothing voice. That being the case, we would love to welcome you to the 4F family. It's super easy to do. You click that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then you ring my 
bell, ring my bell. Choose yes and all notifications and keep saying that every time they pop another window up to ask you the same question in a different damn way. Uh, and then hopefully you'll get told, I don't know, maybe one in four of my films that goes up. My hubby subscribed to me and even he doesn't get all the notifications and sometimes they turn up about a month late, which is interesting. He's like, oh, you put a film up today, darling, about blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, I put that up about six weeks ago, yeah. So, talking of my other films, there are an awful lot you can choose to look at. There are other product reviews, uh, tutorials, collabs, challenges, tag films. There's my Zodiac series, there's my photo inspiration series. Uh, retro reviews. I even read you my favourite poem. So if you're looking for a little bit of me time, basically grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist and indulge my darling. Uh, but be careful if you pick the relax playlist because you, you might find it sends you to sleep. <laughs> Unless that's what you want, of course. In which case, crack on. Right, my lovelies, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.